Welcome back to Watching Film. My name is Seth Varnador. I'm a former high school and college coach for uh, nearly a decade. And now I like to go through and kind of break down some scheme in college football and sometimes particular players. And that's kind of the case today. You'll kind of get a little double dip of the player I want to profile here, which is JT Daniels coming back to Georgia next year as a starting quarterback. He played in four games last year, put up some pretty good numbers in those games and has led to a lot of positivity coming into this next upcoming season. And by looking at him, we'll also kind of get a look at the Georgia passing game a little bit, what concepts they like to run with him, especially early, how they eased him in to his role and then what we can kind of expect from him next year. So we'll kind of look at what he does well and then through that, you'll kind of get to see the Georgia offense, how they like to structure their passing game a little bit. And then uh, we'll end with maybe some stuff he struggled with a little bit last year that you're hoping he cleans up with more playing time. You know, if you're looking for a highlight tape, this isn't it. We're going to probably, we're, we're going to spend time on these plays, look through them and kind of get in the nitty gritty of some of the scheme. And then what, you know, I like about JT Daniels. And if he's the guy that can kind of end, uh, make all the rival fans stop saying 1980. You can see film down here. Uh, I think it was originally uploaded by My God, a podcast, which is a great name for a podcast. Really, really cool. As a SEC guy, I you know I know where that's from, and it's uh, an excellent name. So thank you to them for uploading this film. Let's get into it. So we're going to start in his first action here against Mississippi State. So what they did early for him, and they, you see it a lot in this game, is this is, you know, this is, I refer to this as a package play. So you got the motion out here. He's going to run the bubble. And then down here you have a hitch. So if the corner's off, I can just take the hitch to my freak receiver down here. So right there, it's just a numbers game. If you like that, you see he's already bailing. Take the hitch. It doesn't have to be hard. This is easy. And then you got these guys coming out to block there. So you, he's flying in, so you don't really have the numbers there. So this is a good decision to go backside here. But they kind of eased him into this game with these package plays. And then you don't got to do a lot with the receivers. they you got a lot of talented receivers, as you'll see here. This is another similar. So package plays, some of them, you know, RPOs are kind of a, a version of package play. And again, this could be one here. You see the corners off and bailing. Just take that out there all day. And then here it looks like you might have some split zone action, but the corners off and giving you free access, take the throw out there. So good decision, take the throw. And these guys are so good outside. You don't have to be unbelievable at the quarterback position for them to make plays. Another thing, a simple, easy read. We're just counting numbers. It's a simple arithmetic. If they don't match numbers outside, you got a run game in here. If they don't match the numbers outside, throw it out there. So right now, we've got three receivers. This is the third guy. It's either him or him, right? Neither of those are covering this third receiver. He's too deep. He's too far inside. Take that all day. So I can just get out to him. And that's an easy six, seven yards on first down. Again, package, but it looks like it's an RPO. Down down here, you got a double slant look. Then again up here, your hitch. And it's never a bad idea to throw the hitch to this guy. He's... He's a stud receiver that you just get it in his area and he's going to make the play most of the time. So that's kind of, they eased him in the game with some of these things. Here you have, now we'll kind of get to maybe some more of the intermediate throws he hit. So to me, this is, we had a, I had a coach that called this burst. To me, it looks like we got here, a hook here. And possibly a wide hooker now. It's hard to see on the TV copy here. What you see, nice, nice read, and then the ball location 
on this side, not inside. So we're going putting the ball away from this defender, which lets the receiver turn and get a couple more yards there. So good throw on a third down. Right here, you see a little bit. Uh, you see, looks like possibly a check right here. You see the blitz coming. Making a check at the line of scrimmage. And right here, you just have a go and a speed out. Easy read right here. Go and a speed out. If this guy turns and runs, if you see his numbers, just throw the speed out all day. If that guy would have squatted there, well, then you have the go. Well, that safety there. Good check. Good quick decision. So what I like, JT Daniels, he... He seemed to be a pretty decent decision maker. Now he did. You'll see later. He he he'll he'll force them in there to try to make a big play every now and then, but not a bad decision maker. Gets the ball in his hands. Gets it in his playmaker's hands. That's really all you want at the position. Right here, th to me, this looks like a, a levels concept. And then as he goes in here, he sees the backer sitting, so he just sits here. Again, it's hard to tell exactly, but to me it looks like levels down here. So he's kind of gets here. Instead of running in there and getting covered, he's just going to sit right there in this hole. Daniels does a good job getting the ball to him. Not really, you can see he's not really on platform here on this throw. And still delivers a nice catchable ball there for a first down on third and six. Again, another look at level. So last time it was two by or three by one. This time it's two by two. Deep dig. Short in. Eyes here. Right, if he turns and runs with that and carries that, then you have him coming in that hole. What happens here? He sits here, so now the hole is coming behind him. There's my window. Takes his steps, delivers it, and then you just got to get in his vicinity. Easy touchdown right here on the levels concept. So the levels was like one of Peyton Manning's favorite concepts. So Georgia, they've kind of been, you know, people kind of accused them of having a caveman offense type in the past. And there's, you know, levels pro style concept. A lot of people run it now, but that's made famous by Peyton Manning. Then right here, you have kind of a flood route. So you got to go a deep out. He's going to be whip out here. And you see, once he whips out, if he's getting, people are getting out of the middle of the field and you got the blitz coming. Well, now I got my back on an angle route here. So he knows I got my back one-on-one. -on -one. I see this out here. His posture is turned that way. Find your back. Now look at all this room for your back to win one-on-one. -on -one. He wins across his face. Catchable ball. Right now on the line, just give him a little chance there. And he catches it on the run. And when you got athletes like Georgia does, just get them the ball in space and let them go. And they can make some plays for you. Another intermediate throw. Again, you don't have to be... You know, I think everyone's been kind of clowning on Georgia's quarterback position, especially with, you know, you had Justin Field on camp, Fields on campus and he left. You don't have to have the greatest quarterback in the world with what they've recruited at receiver and the other skill positions. You just have to have a guy that makes good decisions and is accurate with the ball. So you got double slants up top. Double slants. And then they'll pair these kind of quick game concepts together. You got like, uh, I think the area guys call this Y corner. Some guys call it, you got a little snag route there. 
So triangle read over here. You got a double slant back side. He's just going to hit Pickens on a slant, and he's just going to take it the rest of the way. And that's really all you need. Just give somebody, get these guys the ball. And he can do that with accuracy. So you see we're kind of building up. We're going short, and we're kind of starting to hit the intermediate, and then we'll see some of his deeper throws here. But here's some like curl flat concepts. You got some curls, curl routes. This one over. Kind of a defender here. This is a long this is a long throw right here. Use kind of a middle a middle read type route to get the to kind of get the defense out of there, open up the curl window. Same here, you're kind of getting this kind of through the middle. And that opens up the curl out there. Same idea. You see it's, basically it's curl flat. Curl's coming back. You got the middle read. Kind of occupying the middle there. They just do it from different window dressing. So last time they brought the back from this side across, middle read, curl. This time they'll bring the back from the same side, but it's the same idea. It's curl. It appears to be, again, we don't have the L22, but it appears to be curl flat with kind of the middle read guy. Puts it on him. Again, not an easy throw. A little risky, but he puts it on him here. This is a good throw with pressure coming in the face. You got the dig route backside. So the curl, you got the dig. Good route. They got some guys that tie it into. Dig there. Good read, good ball. First and 16, picking up a big gain. And then you see georgia has got a lot of talent with that will have the football in their hand this year. They're going to be dangerous. If JT Daniels could kind of keep on the same trajectory. Now here you have one of my favorite concepts. So to me down here, this looks like you got a tight split. This looks like a kind of an inverted smash look where he's going inside corner. You got a flat, you're high low and this corner right here. All right, there you see, as soon as he plays, he start, he's kind of, he's trying to play both here with his technique. He flips his hips with a guy in his face right here. Good throw to the corner. Catch in front of the safety. So earlier we talked about that kind of wide corner look. To me, this is like a, a snag and go. It almost looks like a like a scissors concept. But I think what the idea behind it was is you get this action a lot from them to the one side. So once you see this post route start or this corner out rather start to clear, you're going to get the safety to open up and run with it. And now instead of him snagging up right there, he's actually going to run down the middle of the field almost like a scissors concept where you almost get like that instead of the, the white corner snag look. And he's just going to go down the middle of the field. Again, this is a really great concept by the by the Georgia's offensive coordinator. You run enough of that snag, these guys start to turn and run with the corner out, and now you can just run him down the middle of the field. And make somebody run with him. Again, great throw. Receiver goes up and makes a great catch. They've got receivers. To me, this looks like kind of a Y cross concept. It's a heavy play action concept, but you got to go out. Y is going to come kind of a deep crosser and then backside. looks like he's got a dig coming behind it. Daniels does a good job here. Play action. 
he sees he's got his back turned, so this means he's not. You don't have to worry about him. Put it on your big tight end, gives him a shot. Tight end goes up and makes a play. So you're seeing you started short, and now we're getting deeper and deeper and deeper. We're going to start to get in a little more vertical routes now, and that's something he does really well. Here's kind of a, a go route. Ends up being almost a back shoulder. Another on a go route. Give your guy a shot. Ends up almost being, again, a back shoulder. You kind of worry, are these supposed to intentionally back shoulders, or is he a little, you know, is he kind of leaving these short? But this one is intentional high and outside, and then this dude is just a freak. Pickens is an animal. Uh Got to be one of the better receivers in college football. Give him somebody that can get hit the ball in his area, and he's going to do a good job. This is a tough throw. This is something Daniels has showed to be pretty good at right here, whether on the move or from the pocket, these deep comeback routes. And if you can hit these with regularity, it's going to be tough, especially when you got a guy like Pickens out there that can really press you vertically because you've got to turn and run or he's going to run by you. And then you break it off. Easy pitch and catch out there. Same thing here, kind of a deep comeback. He gives a little pump fake here. Still gets enough on it. Again, this I don't know if this was designed as a deep comeback or he's coming back in a scramble drill, but again, rolling to his right, throwing the ball to the sideline. Here's another rollout here. Good movement. Break it off. Great placement right here. This is just really tough to guard with the receiver as good as Pickens. Low and outside. You really can't stop that on the move. That's a very good ball there by JT Daniels. Same thing here on the move. More of a deep out shot. But still, on the move, accurate. Not an easy throw right there. So this looks like a kind of a flood concept to me. Go. He's going to get in. He's going to get some collision, but he's running kind of the deep section of this. And then you got your back will end up being the short guy to kind of your check down and your short guy. This is a really good throw. Kind of leading. Instead of just being flat here, kind of leading him away from the defender. Great adjustment by the receiver. But just nice, easy flood route. Easy read. Good ball. Again, same concept here. Go to clear it out. Inside. Get lost. Deep out. And you got the flat coming here. Three levels. Flood. And again, a good ball. To Pickens. This is something right here that Daniels did really well that really kind of opened up the George offense last year. It's just he he was pretty good at these shot plays, especially his first game here against Mississippi State. You just got a deep, you know, this looks like it could be like almost like a dagger concept. But he's kind of one on with the safety, and you see George's run game. What it can do, and again, it's hard to see. What it, what Georgia's run game can do is it can control safeties. So you control safeties with your run game, and now you've got your stud receiver one on with the safety backpedaling, and Georgia's receivers are going to win that more often than not. Again, just give him a shot. He'll go up and make a play. Huge play when Georgia's down in the second quarter. Kind of started slow and then started to snowball after that. But just huge shot play. Here's another one here. They kind of abuse Mississippi State down the field in this game. But that's not any <laughs> – that's a it's a heck of a throw right there. You just have a straight go right here, but let's watch the placement on this ball. Under some duress back here. This is in a super clean pocket. And then that ball is dropped in – 
with, a, with the defender draped right there. That's about as good as you can do it that far down the field. Great throw, great catch. Another shot here. The same receiver. Kind of run across here. You got to go route. Hold the safety. This is almost like a, um, this is almost somewhat, it feels somewhat similar to kind of the Baylor vertical options, but he's just, you got to go right outside. You can take that. You've got some type of uh, deep crosser. And you see the tight end kind of trip as he's getting out there, but I think these are shot plays. Good throw. And then, like I said, these Georgia guys just get it in the vicinity. This one doesn't hit. We saw earlier Georgia run with, a, with this three by one, right? This the snap gets caught a little late here, but we saw them in a three by one throw the bubble right to seven. Here they change up the look, put seven as the second receiver, but he's coming out like he's going to block. He's releasing vertical, and he's going to go to the post, and he's going to run a wheel down the sideline. And this screen action right here freezes the defense for a second. Right there. He comes up. He's dead. And this ball is thrown really well. You see it right, right there. Great throw. Dropped in the end zone. But excellent concept here. Sequencing by Georgia. Make it look like a screen. Run a screen and go. And switch release. You have the wheel, perfect throw. Got to make that catch. But a great design, great throw. And that's kind of what we're looking at. Their design and then JT Daniels. What, what has he got? Another shot. Third and 20. You know, what do you want to don't get beat deep probably? So you've got basically third guys going deep. You got what looks to be a deep square in, but this is similar to kind of the curl flat look. It, it, it can kind of attack the same window depending on coverage, I think, but it's the same kind of idea. A high low with also kind of a horizontal stretch. And then you got this vertical option in to kind of clear things out. But if this safety is sitting this low, take this shot. They catch him in kind of a blitz. Receiver gets behind the defense and Daniels makes a good enough throw for a touchdown. You got to make people pay. What we don't have on here is Georgia playing Florida last year. They got behind Florida a little bit. Their quarterback couldn't make a play. If they have Daniels, is it a different game? I think it's a little bit different. Do they win? I don't know. He didn't play defense. Florida had 40 going into the fourth quarter, I think, and, and kind of shut it down. Or going into the second half, it may have been. It kind of shut it down, so it's hard to say. Uh, but it would have been closer, that's for sure. Another shot here. To Pickens, the guy's a freak. Use the toss fake here. Take a shot down the field. Again, this, this is the one thing that stood out the most to me on film is kind of deep post. I'm trying to occupy the safety right here with that. Is... He, he did such a good job, I thought, throwing the ball down the field vertically, giving his receivers chances. And then what stood out because of that is how talented Georgia is a receiver. They're really good. So right here, this was good to see. Right here, this is supposed to be a shot play, right? He looks, but then he drops it down. That's a smart play. Don't force it. Now, he has problems with that sometimes, and we'll get to that. But it's okay to just drop it down. And that's what he's doing here. Just drop it down early right this is the kind of the same a similar uh play action than what they get the shot to pickets on later they're hoping they get this guy flying up occupy the safety with that he releases like he's blocking him and then i, I can get down the sideline as this guy flies up for a run he doesn't take the bait he turns and runs with it he's there they don't take the bait. You could try to force it maybe in here, but you have a safety rolling there. 
So they're almost baiting you to throw that one. What does he do? Does a smart thing, just drops it down to his back. And now he's going to go pick up a bunch of yards. Just be smart with the ball. Just drop it down. Again, right here. Take a shot. Drop it down. And this is a great job of keeping your eyes kind of downfield with all the craziness going on around you. Drop it down. Take a hit. Great throw on the hit. this tight end on the run. Pick up a first down here. Again, this is really this is late in the game when they're trying to when they're trying to to drive to kick the field goal to win it. Just check it down. Don't force it. Check it down. Give your back a chance to pick up the first down right here. This was a really good one. Looks like he's gonna take off. Awareness to check it down to his back, who can pick up the first down and kind of get them closer to field goal range here. So good awareness. The one thing, you know, I thought that you'd like to see him get better at, and a lot of it is stuff. So that's kind of just his game right there. From the short throws of the deep throws, you see he's got a lot of talent. A lot of what the term of the jour is arm talent. Yeah, he, he can spin it. He can throw it all over the field. Um, and you see he's got some, some accuracy too. But this is what worries you a little bit. And this is, I think, stuff that can be cleared up with more playing time. He hadn't played in a while, didn't play for most of the season. So I think this is stuff that can be cleared up. Not great. Kind of inconsistent with the pressure. So you saw some examples of him stepping up in the pocket, making throws, and doing a good job. But sometimes he kind of, you know, he lets the clock go too long. He's got to know by now, I can't be doing all this. I got to step up, get the ball out of my hand like he does before. Sometimes it's it's like his internal clock is a little off, but that's just, I think, from not playing and maybe trying to make a play. For the most part, he, he does a pretty good job with it. We've seen him make some throws out of pressure. But here, kind of running around, get the ball out of your hand, you know, live to play another down. This one, pressure causing a short arm. Well, that's not on him. He does a pretty good job moving out of the, out of the way there. Well, this is stuff that I think he can clean up. And he at times he shows the pressure comes. He's he can make a great throw. Here, this isn't bad, but just hey, man, get get the ball out of your hand. Now, some of this is on the offensive line here, right? They, they, it's not like they're bringing a bunch of guys here. But just, I think that internal clock, he's he's still getting used to that kind of internal clock there. Pressure causes him to kind of short arm it a little bit. Here, this is what I'm talking about, the like internal clock. You don't got that long. I break the pocket, I got to get the ball out of my hand. Bout, causes, bout fumbles late in the game when they really needed some points here. Could have taken some points off the board. But then he'll do something like this. Where it's fourth and five right here. Big juncture of the game. Tack, you know, your, your tackle right here just gets beat. Right here just gets beat. You've got a guy in your face. What are you going to do? A little, little subtle, right? He's stepping up here and he does a little subtle step there. So this is why like a lot, I think a lot of his stuff... You know, you look, okay, maybe pressure rattled him a little bit early, but, I mean, this is a great play. And this is just a guy that's playing more and more and getting more experience. So that's a great move in the pocket. And then the wherewithal to throw this to, like, the deep dig down here and give your guy a chance, that's an unbelievable play right there. So I think some of this stuff, as, more, as he gets to deal with it more, he'll make more and more plays. Here's another one. Pressure. Avoid it. Get your eyes downfield, make a throw that again should have been caught. But you see, the the more he plays, these are kind of later in games. You kind of get used to it. But this isn't. He's not dilly dallying. Bang! Get your eyes upfield, make a throw. So he's got the ability to do it. We're gonna hear pressure. Eat it. You'll see this one. The result is a interference and a touchdown. We get a better look at it here. That's where the ball. Here's where the ball is thrown. Just give your guy a shot. Give your guy a shot. But right here, look. 
eating the pressure, giving your guy a shot. With these receivers, that's a touchdown. So I think as much as the pressure got him sometimes, he was still pretty good with it. I think that's something that he'll, the more he plays, he'll kind of get, um, that will kind of be less and less of an issue. Right, here's one. You got a little bit. He's going to try to hole shot this. You got to go route. Safety's coming. He's going to try to hole shot this. You got with the corner blitzing. But right here, he's got enough room to kind of get this. He kind of tries to float it in there. Back foot it. Could have got picked. And look at the juncture of the game. If he picks that, this game is over. So got to be careful. There's times where he forces the ball. And I think, you know, you see on those shots, you like him taking those shots down the field. But here, you know, where's this Where's this to? You know, you trust your guy. But that's a tough throw right there. And then I'm all out of whack with my feet. And I've got time to kind of reset and try to hit this. But kind of just try to get it out, force it a little too quick. And then here is kind of a big one. I think they get it. They get lucky. They get kind of an interference call here, but that's not open right there. Pickens is a beast, but that's a tough look. I think you get interference, so it ends up not hurting you. But there's just times where he forces it, and then here's one early. This is, uh, you know, I think this is just a rust. So I, I kind of, it was tough to find a lot of bad stuff. He played pretty well in his first three games, but right here. Doesn't see this. Could could have been a pick six right here early in his first game if he catches that one. He probably gets hot, but could have been a, an easy pick right there. Then this was something he did a couple times, which I, I don't I'm not sure what it was, but it's twice to the same receiver on these kind of flat routes. There's a little behind him. It gets the receiver smoked. Does the same thing here on fourth and one. There's a little behind him. You know, if it's out, he's got this guy outflanked. If the ball's thrown out here and he can catch it, he might turn up and score. Instead, it's a little bit behind him, and then this guy hurts his knee. And then here, just can't leave this inside. He didn't throw. He didn't throw very many interceptions, but can't leave that one inside. So now we're back to the top. You know, JT Daniels is a guy that's really talented. I think. He's going to have a ton of weapons. In my mind, he's kind of a dark horse Heisman candidate. Not necessarily because he's just the most talented guy, but his supporting cast is so good. He doesn't have to do a ton. And he's more than talented enough to do what they need him to do. They're going to be really tough uh, to stop on offense if they kind of keep rolling the way they were at the end of the year last year. They've got, you know, they're going to have a good run game. Keep mixing the passing game in there with those shot plays. Spread the ball around to those dynamic receivers in space. And they're going to be really, really difficult to stop. I think George is this year with JT Daniels at quarterback. He could be kind of that guy that comes up. Heisman dark horse. And now you got yourself an offense good enough to win the national championship for the first time since 1980. 